More than 48 hours after two tornadoes struck the Ottawa Gatineau area, incredible scenes of destruction are still emerging. No storm-related deaths have been reported, but it's clear many lives were thrown into chaos as the punishing winds flattened home after home. Apartments ripped open like they were made of cardboard, large trees torn to pieces, hydro poles snapped like twigs, while fallen power lines left thousands without electricity. Now take a look at what caused it all. There's no sound, but these pictures speak to the incredible force of those gales. Environment Canada says the first tornado reached wind speeds of 265 kilometers an hour, much stronger than is usual for Canada, especially at this time of year. At about 4.40 p.m., it hit Dunrobin, a semi-rural community 35 kilometers west of downtown Ottawa. Then it jumped the Ottawa River, touching down in Gatineau, Quebec. At almost the same time, a second, slightly less powerful twister touched down in the South Ottawa neighborhood of Arlington Wood. There has been so much damage, so many traffic lights are still out. Ottawa officials are urging people to stay home tomorrow, but for some, that is impossible because they no longer have a home. Catherine Cullen has the tale of two families from the community of Dunrobin. Brian Loudon used to live here. He was home when the tornado hit. There's no basement here, so um, the only place we could go was just in that hallway, but it got too dangerous, so we went around the corner. Around the corner? Just a little by the fridge. So we just sat by the fridge, and it only asked about 15 seconds. But when those 15 seconds were up, one neighbor's house looked like this. We're right in the middle. Another almost entirely gone. Nearby, we find this woman looking through the debris. Turns out she's Loudon's wife, Nicole. She's found a small child's jacket along with someone's ultrasound pictures. Some people are walking away with very little. This might be the only thing that that family gets for this kid. This is winter jacket. She tells me later losing the family's home is not the only challenge. They didn't have renter's insurance and their daughter has cancer. <laughs> Ontario's premier saw the hardship firsthand today and seemed shaken by the stories he'd heard. It's, it's heartbreaking. I just want to make it very clear that uh, we will spare no expense to make sure we get people's lives back up and going. Back on the Loudon Street, Laurel Wingrove and her boyfriend are seeing the state of their home for the first time. That's actually my grandmother's chair that's holding up the wall. That's an antique right there. All our stuff can be replaced, but this is like unbelievable. I think that's my boyfriend's jacket right there. Her boyfriend is a volunteer firefighter. Alex Carlson would normally be helping, but a prior injury means he can't. Instead, they're relying on his buddies to salvage what they can from the home. Well, I think they found um, my birth certificate, um, some like government documents, bills and stuff like that. He also lost his laptop, which had, he's a business owner and it had all of his, you know, uh, invoicing and stuff like that on the computer. Carlson says he's grateful for the help, grateful no one died, though he knows there will be tough days ahead. We have somewhere to stay in the short term, I guess, but, you know, we haven't necessarily figured out any kind of long-term arrangements. I think there's a couple of curveballs that make an event this big um, definitely challenging. The, steamer that I never the pair load what's been saved from their home into the car, but the firefighters have a surprise for Carlson. You found that. <laughs> it's a huge relief, but ultimately a small victory in the face of so much destruction. And Catherine joins us now from the Dunrobin area of Ottawa and, and tell us more about the cleanup. Well, Ian, you can see a lot of it happening right behind me. Hydro crews, even in the dark, working to restore power to people in this area. 53 homes that are considered uninhabitable. But I was speaking with a local official who says part of the concern now is what happens with homes that were only partially damaged. They're expecting bad weather later this week. So 
volunteers are going to be out with homeowners trying to put tarps over uh, partially damaged roofs or windows that have been blown out so that those homes won't be further damaged when the bad weather comes along. One ward councillor telling me that, you know, people are really grateful right now. They're so happy when something, uh, a family pet is found alive, a wallet is found. But he knows that eventually that is going to turn to frustration, that there is no way of getting around the fact that this is devastating. Ian. All right. Thank you, Catherine. Earlier this evening, I spoke with Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson. With Premier Ford's promise to provide as much help as necessary, I began by asking the mayor what his city needs. Well, a couple of things. Uh, electricity, uh, first and foremost. We met some crews from Stouffville and Vaughan in the greater Toronto area. Uh, John Tory has offered to send hydro crews, as has the Premier, which is very much appreciated. And we saw some of those uh, workers uh, putting together our, our grid. Uh, we have about 70,000 people still without power. Uh, and this is going on to uh, the third day. So it's obviously a concern, particularly people who live in high rises, seniors uh, that don't have working elevators. And then, of course, there are the people whose homes were badly damaged or even destroyed. Where do they go to begin to get the help they need to, to rebuild? Well, you, you know, you're quite right, Ian. Uh, the Premier and I were in the hardest hit area, Dunrobin. And uh, it looked like, you know, it was a plane crash. You know, debris everywhere, papers flying everywhere. Uh, 51 homes are uh, just decimated or, or beyond repair. Uh, people are going first and foremost, obviously, to their neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. Here we have uh, close to five or six hundred people coming in for a warm meal because uh, their electricity is not working. Uh, they're going to their insurance companies and then, of course, uh, the city and the province are helping uh, clear the debris, get the hydro system back up and running and, and making sure that those areas that are isolated in rural Ottawa are protected from looters and other people that do uh, uh, inappropriate things at this time of need. Have you ever seen anything like this in Ottawa? Nothing like this. I was mayor back uh, when uh, the ice storm uh, hit our city and, and most of uh, eastern Canada. Uh, but uh, the sheer destruction, Ian, of the homes is unbelievable. And we do know you have been very busy and we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us this evening, Mayor Watson. Thank you. And we're very proud of our first responders and hydro workers. They're, they're the real angels uh, helping us in, in our time of need. So thank you. So incredible stories, Adrian, from the first responders. But you were here on Friday. Uh, there were other incredible stories. Uh, absolutely. One of the moments that seemed to stop everyone in their tracks was an interview with a man who was, you know, reeling from nearly having lost his four-year-old daughter who was being potentially taken by the wind. So we have an update uh, about him and his daughter. But first, here's that exchange again. I'm okay now, but my daughter was in the air. That's our unit over there. And I, when it ripped our roof, my daughter, she went flying up and I'm holding her hand in the air. And I almost let go because I, she was slipping and I said, if she's going to die, I'm going to die with her. And then it finally went fast. And she fell down in the drywall, knocked her on the ground. It's the worst thing I've ever went through. Okay, terrifying. So as soon as we saw that, we were asking, you know, who is this man? What happened to his daughter? How is he managing? So Rosie went to find out. His name is James Witter, and here's their chat from this afternoon. Help us understand. It's this one here with the black? Yes. And what, so what is that white thing that's on? That there? is actually my son's dresser, with his baby clothes, and our TV and stuff was on it, and you can see the white is yeah. our bed and our blue blanket on top of it. Seems like our walls, they was a faulty or something, but our walls just tore like it was nothing. Like as the roof tore, the wall tore, and this, like how does that, I don't know. You seem very shaken still. So I think of my daughter, right? And I, just being here is bringing back some emotion of. Well, this is your first time back. Losing right? her. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been back since. And, uh, just being able to see my own stuff from standing at a road block away is it's very terrifying to me. And, uh, Could you believe the force of it, like the force of the wind? No, I've, I've, I've never, you know, experienced anything like that. The strength of it was so strong that I don't know how we survived something like that. If I could only take you in and show you my unit, you would see the real destruction inside and what we actually lived through. It was the most terrifying and horrifying thing I've ever, you know. Can you imagine a, a kid flying away, what they, th what they think in their head, you know? 
So I just she was wanted, in the air. Like she was literally she was, in the air. Yeah, she was up. And I, because I tried to whip her off of her bed, and that's what I think did, gave her the vert. And with the wind pulling at the same time, that's what kind of got her up there. Yeah. And then as soon as I was just about to let go of the door frame from her bedroom, that's when the wind just stopped all of a sudden and she just fell and the drywall smacked her down on the ground. The drywall that had been pulled off the wall. Yeah, and it smacked her, not, not off her wall, but somewhere in the it's building or the debris from the, from the end of the yeah. tornado smacked her directly on the ground. And what was she doing? Was she like screaming? Did yeah, she understand? She didn't, she didn't understand. Till this day, she she still doesn't understand really what weather is and what it does, like how how it can do that. But this right? is happening in seconds. It's it's all seconds. It all happens so fast. But when you're actually in it, it felt like forever. And I just thought to myself, this is it. Our family is gonna die here. We're gonna die together. We lost everything. We have no insurance, and we have nothing now. Absolutely nothing. You know. Uh, Everything that we did have is pretty much destroyed. Maybe if they do allow me back in, maybe if they let me back in, I will be able to salvage some clothes, you know, some maybe uh, some items that I had stored away, the family artifacts and stuff that are sentimental to me. <laughs> I don't know. Do you feel lucky that it that you, you're at least okay and the kids are okay? I, I feel more than lucky. I, I feel blessed and I feel like uh, there's a reason that God gave me and my family a second chance on this earth because if you you know, uh, I'm sure you've seen lots of storms around the world that, uh, you know, uh, most people when you lose your roof is one thing, but when you lose your roof and your walls, most of the people, they, they don't survive, especially the whole family. Yeah. So the fact that we all survived is a total miracle and it's unbelievable to me that we could actually live through something like that. And I hope in my life I never have to go through something like that again. Yeah, no kidding. Renee Filippone covers developing stories for us uh, Sunday evening. So, of course, she's tracking the latest on this story. Lots of people in the Ottawa area still without power tonight, which I guess, Renee, is about down lines and a substation. So. Help us out here. What are the numbers? What are the lights coming back on? All right, well, Adrian, right now we know there are about 80,000 homes and businesses still without power, and it will likely take several days before everything can be restored. Now, the main issue, as you mentioned, is that destroyed Maryvale substation. It's a small but very important one. It's where Hydro One feeds electricity into the Hydro Ottawa grid, and it powers about half of the city. So along with all the downed wires, hydro crews are trying to come up with a plan to bypass the Maryville substation. Now, this will work for some areas, but for thousands in Canada and South Nepean, the only electric wires reaching those communities come from this substation, so it needs to be repaired quickly. And for now, Hydro Ottawa is asking people to turn off lights and unplug appliances to cut down on electricity use and prevent the system from overloading. The message, uh, Adrian, for residents is to stay home tomorrow and off the roads, which are dangerous with a lot of street lights out. And all the schools run by the Ottawa Catholic School Board and the Ottawa Carleton District School Board will be closed tomorrow, as well as a handful of schools in the French Catholic School District. Meanwhile, Adrian, four people are still in hospital from injuries related to the tornado, two of which are in critical condition.